Hello and welcome to TechnoDad Life and today's video we're going to be installing OMV4 on Raspberry Pi and why we're doing OMV4 today was last week when I did OMV3 the next day OMV4 was released for the Raspberry Pi so basically I'm just redoing this with the updated version of OMV and so as always if you find this helpful make sure you like and subscribe and here we go now So we need three things to start out with. So we need the Open Media Vault ISO. And so you can find that at openmediavault.org, download, and then click on the found here. Next, it will take us to SourceForge. And where we want to go is this one, Open Media Vault for single board computers. Do not go to the Raspberry Pi images. We want the Open Media Vault 4 Raspberry Pi 233 Plus image. And then just click on that to download. While that's downloading, we're going to go to putty.org and then uh, download putty here. And click on the latest version when you do that. And then finally, we're going to go over to etcher.io. We're going to download the version for our computer. Once all three things are downloaded, then we're going to burn that to an SD card, which we'll then insert into our Raspberry Pi. So first we install our SD card, then we start up Edger. And you can see our SD card is already detected there. We're going to click Select Image. We're going to click on the OMV4 image, Open. And then we're going to flash that. And then after flashing, it will uh, verify it. And then you click OK. So once that's done, uh, click Close. And then pull out your SD card and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. So next, we have to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And so one way is to go into our router and find out the IP address that way. The second is if we have a terminal or a screen hooked up to the Raspberry Pi, we can see the IP address. And you can see there it's the same, 192.168.254.82. Once we have that, what we can do is copy that and paste that in. And now we can log into our Raspberry Pi. So the default username is admin and the password is Open Media Vault. Once you have that, click login. Okay, so now that we are into our Raspberry Pi, we need to do a couple of different things. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go down the side here and basically go through each setting and adjust that to what we need to have a fully functioning Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go to general settings and the first thing we're going to do is change this to zero so it doesn't automatically log out and we're going to save that setting click apply and yes next we're going to go to web administrator and we're going to change our password there then click save and make sure you write down that because next time you log in you will need that to Log in to your Open Media Vault server. We're going to click on date and time. We're going to change some settings so it has the right date, wrong time. So we're going to click that. I'm in the Eastern Zone. We're going to click Save. And now we have the right time. So network settings. Here we can change our host name. Uh, I'm going to leave it as this. So we can look. Uh, we can, add, if we want to add interfaces, HDT proxy, uh, the services, and if we want to add in a firewall, these are all where we would do that. Next is notifications. So these are if we want notifications. Uh, here we would put in our email address, power management. And so my Raspberry Pi does not have a power button, but if it did, what we could do on my main server, I put it on standby. And so I'll just do that to show you how to do it. And then you click save. So this way, if the power button is every, ever pressed on your server, it will go into standby mode instead of shutting down. Monitoring, so we want to collect statistics. So we're gonna click enable and click save. 
So certificates, these are where you can add your certificates for say SSL and other things. Schedule jobs, these are where if you have any Crone jobs that you want to schedule, this is where you would do that. Update manager, so, so here we're going to click the box next to package information and upgrade. And you can see that did not work. So we're going to do two things. So one is we're going to go down to SSH. And we're going to enable root login. Click save. And so then we're going to click on PuTTY. And we're going to type in our IP address. And we're going to call that Raspberry Pi. Save that. And then click open. And for here, you might uh, say asking for a root certificate, and so you just click yes. So our login is root, and our password is Open Media Vault. And so the first thing it's going to ask us to do is change our password. So first, we have to uh, put in our current password, which is Open Media Vault. And now we're going to type in our new password. And once we're done with that, hit enter. And now we can uh, do our update. So first thing we're going to do is app get update. Once that's done, then we need to put in dpk g dash dash config dash a. Hit enter. And then app get upgrade. Click yes. Click OK. Once that's done, you can close this window. And then if we go back up to Update Manager, now we can click on Package Information, click Upgrade. Once that's done, click Close. And now all our packages are updated. So next we'll go over to OVM Extras. And here what we're going to do is enable Doctor, Docker. Click Edit. Enable, click Save, click Update, click Close. Now we'll go over to Plugins. Next we're going to click Check. And then we're going to click on Shell in a box. And then we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And click on Docker. And then Install. And yes. Then we're going to click Close and Reload. And now if we scroll down, we have shell in the box and Docker there. And if we scroll down here to services, we can now see that we have services, Docker and shell in the box in our list. So next we're going to go up to storage. We're going to click on physical disks. So this is our SD card. And here I have a solid state drive attached. And so if you have a drive attached to your Raspberry Pi, it either has to be a power drive. And if you have more than one drive, they definitely need to be powered uh, if they're regular hard drives. If it's a SSD, you can get away with just having one attached to the Raspberry Pi without needing power. So we're going to click on our SSD and we're going to click edit. So if you have a regular hard drive attached, what you'll want to do is change some of these settings here. These are the disk properties to make it so it's not so noisy. So what you would do is click on minimal power and then click minimal performance for minimal acoustics. Set a spin down time. And then if it's right catch and enable, you would want to do that. And then you would click save. Next, we're going to go back to our disk and then we're just going to click wipe. Do we really want to wipe it? Yes. And we're going to do that quick. Then click close. Next, we're going to click on smart and enable to enable smart. First, you have to click on enable, then click save. And so what this will allow us to do is do tests on our devices or our hard drives attached. So next we're going to click on devices and then we click on there's our SSD. So first we're going to click edit and then activate and save. And so this will allow our computer to uh, test that hard drive. And if we click on information now, you can see it will tell us the device information, attributes, tell what state it's in, 
Uh, we haven't done a test yet, but if we did, this will be the test logs and then extended information. How you would set up a test is you would schedule tests and then click add and then select your device. Type of test, uh, time when you want it to be done. And so we'll just say uh, midnight and day of the week. We'll say every Sunday and then click save. And so now our device is set up to be tested uh, every Sunday at midnight. Next, we're going to click on RAID Management. And so if you have more than one disk attached, this would be how you do it. So you click Create. Just have one disk attached, or then you don't need to do this. But if you do, you can click Mirror. So that would uh, basically RAID 1, where you'd ex get an exact copy. If you have more than that, which I sincerely doubt on a Raspberry Pi, uh, you could click one of the other ones. Uh, then what you would do, uh, you can see here it needs a minimum of two devices, so we can't do it. But if you did have more than one, you'd click that, and then you'd click Create. So next is File System. Click Create. And we're going to select that here. And we're going to label that SSD. Click OK. And yes. Once that's done, click Close. Next, we're going to click on that again and click Mount. Apply, yes. And now you can see here it is online and it's mounted. Now we're going to click on Flash Memory. And so for the Raspberry Pi version of Open Media Vault, this is enabled by default, so we don't have to do anything. We're going to go down to User. We're going to add a user. And so our user is going to be called User1 and put in a password then click save apply yes next we're going to go down to shared folders and we're going to create three shared folders so how we're going to do that is click add and the first folder is going to be called app data and our device is our ssd and so down at permissions we want to scroll down and click on everyone read write. click save apply yes Next, we're going to add in two more folders. It's going to be the exact same way, so I'll go through a little quickly, but those two folders are media and downloads. So once you have those three folders, we're going to go down here and we're gonna click on SMB. First thing we're going to do is enable that. Click Save. So this is very interesting if you get this error message where it says no passwords. Uh, what you actually have to do, the, the only thing you actually have to do is clear your browser cache. Then once you do that, you may need to log back in, uh, but uh, then we'll be able to do this. So first click OK. So after I cleared my browser cache and cookies, uh, then I need to log back in. So my login is admin, of course. And our password is our new password that we put in. Then click Login. And so now we scroll down to SMB. We're going to click Enable. Click Save. And you can see now it works no problem. Next we're going to click on Shares. And so we're going to add in those three folders we created to Public Shares so we can access them from Windows. So first one was App Data. We're going to click public and guests allowed. And then we're going to go down here to enable permission inheritance. Click save. And now we're going to do the exact same thing for those two other folders. So once you're done saving those, uh, then we'll go to our Windows share and go to our network. And we click on that. There's our Raspberry Pi. There's our three folders. And we're going to click on one. And let's see if we can add anything to it. Next, let's see if we can delete it. And yes, we can. So we have read-write capability to our folders. Uh, if you don't have read-write capability, check out my video about Windows Shares. And that will go over some common problems that people have. And the next thing we're going to go is we're going to go back to Services. And we're going to do two things. First, we're going to set up shell in the box and then Docker. So for shell in the box, you actually need to have SSH enabled. So we'll take a look at that. 
And so ours is already enabled because we used it already and it has to be set to port 22. If it's not set to port 22 or SSH is not enabled, then shell in the box will not work. So let's go back to shell in the box. We're going to click enable and then click save. Then click on web clients and here just click on advanced and proceed. And so now we're going to log into our Raspberry Pi. And so here you can see we can log into our Raspberry Pi. The nice thing about shell in the box, it's a faster way to log into your Raspberry Pi. So I use it quite a bit actually. So next let's go back to Open Media Vault. We're going to click on Docker, enable plugin and save, and then apply yes. And now you're set up to follow all our uh, tutorials. And so if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.